Hi there, Perfecto De Castro here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. A few months back, I released the saddest SG guitar restoration project video. And I still don't have the guitar in my hands. It's still at Robbie's shop being restored as we speak. But he has sent me enough clips so that I can put together this update video for all you guys. Roll intro. Okay, this first clip is from when I dropped the guitar off at Robbie's shop. And in it, you will see <laughs> Robbie's initial reaction to the guitar. And we also talk about the plan of action as far as restoration goes. Enjoy. This is Robbie. Right. Yep, he is going to bring this guitar back to life. Okay, and this is, this is the saddest SG ever. <laughs> It's a uh, yes. like tone holes. <laughs> so, yeah, tone ports. Tone ports. <laughs> See, so somebody bought this, uh, converted it to lefty, then reconverted it to righty. So it looks yeah. like it. Right. So the lefty conversion looks pro. The reconversion does not. <laughs> yeah, this this looks better. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So what year is this, bro? It's uh, supposedly it's a 63. There's a faint serial number at the headstock. I don't know if we can salvage that, but it's like it looks like it's been painted over. You know, I, I think what happened, um, it's probably still there. Mm -hmm. Just lacquer buildup, you know? So, okay. So I'll strip this by solvent to see where we are. Okay. And then I think the best way to do here is uh, I'll strip the front and the back mm -hmm. because I'm I'm almost eighty percent certain that this is probably Honduran. Honduran mahogany. And if anything, I have to find at least at least maybe twenty year old mahogany. Okay. Because the problem is this is old mahogany, and then when you graft it with something newer, like they, they, they move at different uh, they move and then rates. They, uh, they like to, it depends, some shrink, if mm -hmm. you cut it down to plane like flat, some shrink, mm -hmm. some expand moisture. Oh, yeah. And then the sad thing about it is like when you're done with the finish and then you look in the light, you can see it pop. You know? Right. So I, like, that's the first order of business. Just strip this off, look at the grain, and then I gotta, I mean, I know two people who might have, mm -hmm. like, 30, 40, 50, at least like little pieces. Right. And I'll buy it off them. And then that's when you start grafting. Because even though, uh, even though I, I would graft this, I would still do my best to align the grain, you know? Right, right. Because like... That way they, like, they move the same way. Right. And also like, I'm very impartial to like what we talked about, wine red. Right, right. If I, we can get away with murder, you know? Because like deep cherry wine, or deep cherry red, you know? Yeah. If, yeah. if it looks okay, then you know, and if you're okay, then you yeah. can go. Yeah, so. it's, uh, Wally Gonzalez hit. Yeah. So. Hey, sounds good. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in no rush. I just, I, yeah. I, I want it done properly. Properly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, man, yeah. if we can get away with wally this, man, I, I'm a big fan of Wally too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm like very impartial. Yeah. You know, the, uh, I had a quick exchange with his son on Facebook. The S, Wally's SG, I think, used to be white. Oh, and then somebody stripped, stripped it, it. Okay. and then it then installed the open coil humbuckers. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> we'll decide at the end. For, yeah. yeah, we'll decide. Like, we'll figure it out. Yeah, like, yeah. I want to make sure it, uh, nothing else, no, no cracks. It didn't. This never broke, right? I I don't yeah. think so. We'll find out. Hopefully, you you yeah. you you'll yeah, find this out. This looks reshaped, bro. A little bit. Basically. Yeah, yeah, I can see. So, yeah, there's a little bit of that. But uh, as we'll you can see, the frets are look still look original. The nibs are right. Intact. The nibs are still in there. Yeah. So yeah, man. So we'll see. Uh, so safest way to do is strip this by solvent, and then I'll 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 go easy with stripping it with solvent. Mm hmm. Because I could always clean up later. But like we gotta make this pointy again because this is way too rounded. Right. You got rounded. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll bring it back to... to it has to be sharp. Yeah. I mean, not super sharp, but you see, this was, this is a little, supposed to be a little rounded. Yeah. And uh, this is okay. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> White out. White out. 
<laughs> has budget touch up man. I know it's like we'll save it for it yeah yeah we'll save it. <laughs> but none of them is original anymore right yeah I mean I, I believe the tailpiece would looks original this is not right. the pickups are definitely not the pots are not the output jack might be original yeah. so we'll just you Walker know chip looks original okay that looks yeah. okay I think so yeah, yeah. 500 bucks right there <laughs> this is original right um no no that doesn't look original because the 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 uh truss rod cover for these uh don't have the outline okay. the ones i've seen online anyway right. so right. so they might not be well yeah man we'll save this man yeah okay thanks robbie we'll see you Looking... in a few months yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here are the initial batch of photos that Rob sent me. So this is when he first stripped uh, the paint off the body. And as you can see, it is a beautiful piece of Honduran mahogany. And you can also see the liberal amounts of mastic or bondo <laughs> used by the uh, whoever you know did the repaint uh, previously. And our hunch was that the guy was an automotive uh, painter and this was the process that he was familiar with. It's great for cars, but unfortunately not great for guitars. This next picture is the close-up. All that gray stuff is the Bondo. And as you can see in the pickup cavity, the guitar was indeed originally white. And then this is the back. So the top matches the back and you get more <laughs> more bondo by the heel joint. This is a close-up of the lower horn and you can see how much buildup of mastic was used uh, before the layer of paint. Ooh. Now, let me scroll back to the previous picture. This is good news, however. Uh, it shows that there is no crack at the neck heel, which is a common SG uh, issue. Okay, so there weren't any repaired cracks. Okay, so here's a picture of the back of the headstock. Rob managed to salvage the serial number, as he said he would, using solvent uh, when I dropped the guitar off at his shop. Uh, I blurred out the serial number just so that you guys don't see it, but uh, believe me, it's intact. And it was also confirmed to be uh, an authentic uh, SG from 1963, so yes. <laughs> Here's a close-up of the heel and the amount of mastic used <laughs> to smooth out that area. Ooh. Oh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's gross and irritating at the same time. And here's another pick. Yeah, but you can clearly see that there are no cracks at the heel joint and it is intact, so. That's the good news there. However, this also meant that Rob had to move very carefully and strip uh, everything mostly by hand so as not to cause any new issues. That's one of the reasons why this project's taking a long time. Here is a clip of the guitar with most of the finish stripped off. Beautiful. Let's hear what Rob has to say. Finally, finishes off. And just as I suspected, um, this was refinished in um, automotive paint down to the epoxy primer they use for, for body work. It's essentially the same thing you put on metal to hide deep scratches, gouges, dents, whatever. So, I mean, even though majority is off, there are some that are deep in the pores. Unfortunately, this is as much as we can remove it without taking too much wood. But in any case, everything is off. This was scary because the buildup here was insane. But we got clean joints, no breaks. No breaks here. And that's our serial number, visible. So Perf and I were discussing that this might be the original frets. And you know what? After looking at it closely and consulting with like friends, I believe 100% this is the original frets. There's no chips, there's no scores on the actual fingerboard. It's clean. Which also led to Perf thinking this is the original binding because the nibs are there, right? But here's what threw me off. 
this guitar was a righty routed for a lefty. So that's why it's with me to plug this. So after stripping everything and the fact that this was painted in poly, I thought that the side dots was buried deep with the poly paint, right? But now that it's down on the binding, I don't see no side dots here. But on this side, there's brass uh, dots that was put here. And it's brass because it's poking up. I know that for a fact. So, which leads me to conclude that in as much as I want to believe that this binding was original, it is not. And I can tell you right now, this was added later because there's no dots, side dots. Also, I can see the joint at the end on, uh, on the uh, lower right part of the horn. And on this side, it's done a better job. But I guess what I'm saying is it's easy to put a new binding and just add nibs, you know, that's not hard. But the fact that this was a righty guitar from the factory, supposedly, and there is no side dots, which tells me that this binding is aftermarket, after the fact. Sorry, Perf, <laughs> that's, I think that's uh, what happened here. But either way, the next stage would be us uh, drawing a template here. It's kind of thin because, you know, this is routed like, uh, close enough to fit a pot that I think I only have like an eighth of an inch of. So but I gotta get this flat first. Square this off a little bit. Plug it. And then after this gets plugged, I need to route this along with the plug so it's dead flat. But first things first, I gotta draw a template here for the outside and the inside. But major progress update, you know, we're moving along. And uh, get this all restored. Oh, by the way, all original lines on the guitar is back on. Remember uh, earlier in the video, I told you this got rounded way too much. Um, so now you see the actual bevels right there. And there's like a slight slope here that was taken out. Now it's back. Bevels are here. You see lines. And I like uh, the reason I like working on SGs because kind of reminds me of a uh, someone who would design cars. You know, multiple lines meeting. You know, it's, it's you know it's not every uh, it's not for everyone this guitar, but I can appreciate you know the thought process that got it here. You know, so and it's not. It's not easy to make curves and bevels and meet them and make it look aesthetically clean. So I guess that's why I like this cheese. Um, so we're moving along. Um, no fears of brakes. Body's clean, aside from the little fills here. So I guess after we fill this up, we'll decide if it's even worth it to uh, do a trans finish. Um, but let's take one thing at a time. And there's a lot of plugging me to be done here, shaping dowels and whatnot. All right, see you in a few shoots. Okay, yeah, so the mastic stuck in the pores of the wood means that we can't do the original plan, which is a transparent cherry finish, uh, which is kind of a bummer. However, I think this is the perfect opportunity to involve you guys in this restoration process. So put in the comments below um, what your color suggestion is for this SG restoration. I was thinking of, um, instead of going back to the original white finish, um, it might be fun to have it finished in 
another 60s Gibson color like uh, Pelham blue or uh, frost blue or uh, Kerry green or red or something like that. Anything but transparent cherry. Anyway, have at it, put it in the comments and I'll pick, I'll pick one out. <laughs> Nothing too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and also keep it to uh, Gibson colors because at the end of the day, this is a fairly valuable guitar and I don't want to mess it up too much. I want to have fun, but I don't want to devalue it. There you go. Okay, so here are the templates for the cavity plugs. So there is one at the bottom and then one on top. There's more fitting and more fitting. And here is a time lapse of Robbie rerouting uh, the cavity to make sure the plugs are um, nice and snug. Okay. <laughs> I love the tag team action of this. Here is the result of that routing job. Nice and flat and ready for the plug. And then here is a time lapse of Robbie cutting out the mahogany plugs uh, to glue into those cavities. And then it's final sanding and final shaping, uh, making sure that it conforms to the template. Then here is the glue up process. <laughs> the tag team again. Okay, the glue being used is Tight Bond, which is a typical guitar maker's glue. And there it is, all plugged up and nice and tight with the clamps. So here is the initial plug up and routing for the outer plug. Nice and solid. Now the lefty potholes weren't exactly round, so Robbie had to uh, re-drill them again, uh, just so that they are perfectly round to accept the new dowels. And this is how he shaped the dowels, by hand. Uh, I owe you a lot of beers, Rob, on top of what I'm paying you. <laughs> This is uh, gluing the uh, round dowels into the um, potholes. Yeah. And it is a perfect fit. Very cool. These are the holes plugged and the grain matches for the most part. I mean, that's the best way uh, we could hope for at this point. However, these are still very visible uh, through a transparent finish. So yeah, so trans cherry is definitely out. Okay, now this is the second cavity plug uh, being shaped and Rob has drawn the template on and is carefully sanding it to size. And then here is the final clip that I received from him. So this is the body with everything plugged up and receiving the first sanding sealer coat. So as you can see, this is kind of a, like a preview of the uh, transparent finish and the mahogany grafts are really visible under that transparent finish. So we need to go with a solid color. Okay, there you have it. Those are the updates to the Sidest SG Guitar Restoration Project. And as mentioned in the middle of the video, I need your guys' suggestions as far as color goes so that we can move this project along. Should I go aged Pelham blue or Kerry green or aged white or, you know, feel free to suggest any color as long as it is Gibson 60s color. <laughs> If you dug this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and don't forget to ring that bell. And you know what to do in the comments. Click on an end card to go watch another video, then go grab your guitar and play something. You all know the drill, practice makes perfecto. Cheers, guys.